So in our last lesson, we went ahead and learned how to have output or being able to output a signal that will light up an LED. So I'm going to go ahead and run that program from last week. And sure enough, it lights the light up for a second and then ends. This week, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to add a button to this loop. So that when we press the button, the light will turn on. And when we let the button go, the light turns off. So the parts we'll need for this week is, well, obviously a button, two male to male cables, and one male to female. So this week we're going to be adding three cables and a button. All right. Now the button is going to work quite a bit like with the LED. We're going to need a cable to come in for the signal and something to go out for the ground. Now, if we take a look at our little GPIO map, we've only got 40 pins to work with. Eventually we're going to run out. So anytime that you can go ahead and use the same pin over and over again, it's a good idea to do that. In this case, we have two different components that are going to need to be grounded, and we can use that same ground pin. In this case, we're using number six. So let's take a look at our breadboard. Last week, we looked at how all these holes connect across. Well, that is until you hit the, the divider. So anything you plug into the first hole at 30 is connected to, well, the fifth hole at 30. Well, now we're gonna look at the ones at the side here, the red and the blue lined ones. And these work vertically. So anything you plug in at, well, way at the top here in the blue line will be connected to way down here at the bottom line. And this is how we're gonna share our ground. So I gotta take the ground, plug it into the very first hole up at the top. I'm gonna take the, the short male to male I will plug it into the line, in this case, number 12, which is connected to the negative or the ground for our LED. I'm also going to plug that into anywhere in this line, the blue line. And it's just kind of an OCD thing. I like it to be on the same line. But if we went ahead and ran our program again, It still works. And now we've gone ahead and turned the ground on vertically. So now we can use it for our button. Now, to be fair, I'm going to go ahead and shut my Pi down. I really don't like doing the wiring while it's live. So I'll just quickly shut it down and we'll go ahead and hook up that button. All right, with the power gone from the Pi, I'm going to go ahead and take my button and take a look at it. You notice that there's two pins on each side. You want to make sure when you're adding it to your breadboard, that the side pins are what you're looking at. Don't have them going up and down, have them side to side. And I'm gonna put mine in at 30 and 32. And I'm also gonna put them across the gap here. All we need to do is just access the pins on one side. And we're gonna have a signal going through one and ground on the other. So I'll go ahead and take my next male to male. And on 30, the top pin, I'm going to make that the ground. And then I need a GPIO port for the, the bottom pin. So I'll connect to that. And of course, I'll grab that handy printout of all the GPIO pins. Now, I tend to like to use the back row first. It really doesn't matter what GPIO pin you're using, at least not at this point. Use whatever's available to you, but uh, I'm already using number seven. So I'm going to come down and use 17 next. So that's pin 11, which of course is the sixth row, two less than the other GPIO pin I'm using. There we go. We'll make sure we have a snug fit. And I already see a problem here. I put this one in the wrong one. This is supposed to be in 32. Nothing would happen there. I'd go ahead and hit my button and it wouldn't work. All right, the wiring looks good. So the way this works is we kind of have two components working here. We have the button set up and by default, it's going to have power running through it. And when I press the button, it's going to interrupt the power. It's going to connect that ground and in code, we're going to be receiving a zero. What I'm going to do is connect the state of the button up to the light so that when I press the button, the light goes out. Now, there are two ways to do this, referred to as pull up and pull down. Today, we're going to be looking at the pull up method. 
Then when we look at the diagram for the circuit, we can go over what's the difference between a pull up and a pull down. So let's go ahead, we'll put some power onto this and start coding. So here we are with last week's program. I'm gonna start with this one. Actually, no, we'll just go ahead and create a whole new one. I'm gonna close this down, new file. And this one I am gonna call button input. We know right off the bat, we're gonna to wanna to import that GPIO. Of course, that's rp small i dot gpio. And I'm going to refer to it as gpio in my code. And then I'm still going to need that sleep to be able to create a timer. But this time we're going to import a little bit different. Last time we just called the timer, then we would call time dot sleep. This time we're just going to import only the sleep because that's all we need for this program. So we're going to say from time import sleep. And what this does is now we don't have to say Time dot sleep and then some number. Let me get the cursor out of the way. All we have to do now is just say sleep. So it's just a little bit of shorthand. Admittedly, I think we're only gonna have one sleep in this program today, so it's not that big of a savings. To be honest, it took more time typing it out and explaining it than it's actually gonna save us just typing out the time, but that's fine. Those are the only two things we're gonna have to import. So let's go ahead, we'll set up our board. So GPIO dot set mode. And we're going to do the mode just like we did last time. So we're going to tell it to use the Broadcom, which is BCIM. But before we do that, we have to say GPIO dot BCM. And this time, instead of just using numbers to denote what pins we're using and also the sleep timer, let's go ahead and start using variables. So my sleep time is now going to be equal to a tenth of a second. And I'm also going to want to get a reference to the GPIO pin for the light and for the button. So we'll say light pin is equal to, and take a quick look here, it looks like seven. Nope, sorry, that's GPIO four, it's pin seven, but GPIO four and our button pin, that's equal to 17. Now, when I'm looking at the pin layout, I've often wondered why the numbers are so strange with the GPIO numbering. Five's way down at the bottom, and we come back up here at 17. If anyone knows why, let me know down below in the comments. And I'm going to make one comment at the top here. I'm just going to say GPIO pin of the component. Just so when I come back, I know exactly what I was doing there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how we use these. So last time we went GPIO dot setup. And for setting up the light pin, last time we just typed a four, but this time we're going to type light pin. And then of course, this is an output. So it's GPIO dot out. And then we have to go ahead and set the button up, which is pretty much the same. GPIO dot setup. This time we're going to use the button pin. And the other one was GPIO out. What do you think this one is? Well, if you said in, you're right. Now we could just end it here, but we'd have to go back to the breadboard and physically create the, the circuitry for the pull up resistor. But the Broadcom chip has that built in and we can access that. And all we have to do is type in pull down and then just go ahead and set it to gpio dot pud for pull up down and as i said we're working with up today there we go so we're going to go ahead set up the button pin which in this case is number 17 we're setting it up as an input and then we're going to go ahead and get the value for the pull up down and have it equal to the gpio pud up so we're telling it that we are using a pull up so now that we have that going let's take a look at while loops I'm gonna say while true. Now what this does is it just loops infinitely. And while it's looping, I wanna take the gpio.output, what we wanna to output to, in this case will be the light pin. And then we wanna pass in some sort of true or false value or a one or a zero, a high or a low. And I wanna get the value of the actual button and whether or not we have it pressed or not. So we can say gpio.input, oops, I did not mean to hit enter there. And the input we want is from the button pin. And we actually need one more parenthesis there to close off the rest of the line. And then all we have to do is add a sleep or our pie will lock up, use all of its resources and eventually blow up. <laughs> all right, so we'll go ahead, we'll save this off. Now I've been saving mine into my documents folder. So let's go there. So I've gone ahead and created a folder just for all of my Raspberry Pi scripts. I probably should have another one here for Python. So if we cover Python scripts and later on uh, C Sharp scripts, I can move them later. I'll call it button input dot 
py and right away up here this should be from time not for time i'll hit save let's go ahead we'll hit f5 the light goes on when we press the button the light goes off when we let go of the button the light goes back on if i go ahead and cancel the program the program stops running but take note that the light itself stays on and this can actually be a bad thing. Let's say you were creating some sort of smart oven and when your program crashed or was terminated, you don't wanna have you know, the oven staying on. We want it to turn off. So we'll come back into the code and change a few things here. The first thing I wanna look at is called a try catch block or in this case, try finally. And what this does, is it says, go ahead, try this code. In this case, it'll be the while loop. And if for some reason we crash, we wanna make sure that we run the GP IO cleanup so we'll clear what the pins have been programmed. And then before that, I wanna make sure I turn that light off. Now white space does matter. It's gotta be indented four spots, one tab. And I'm gonna be working with the light pin. And I wanna set this to false. And I'm also gonna go ahead and copy this line. And right after we set it up, I'm gonna make sure it's false by default. So just setting a default value for it. So now let's go ahead, we'll save it off and try this. We'll go hit F5. And now when I hit the button, it turns off, turns back on, turns off, turns back on, cancel program. And because of that finally block, it goes ahead and turns the light off. Now there's only one more thing I wanna take a look at, and that is to have it go ahead and start off by default. And then when I push the button, have it turn on. And for that, we're gonna look at the not operator. For those following along with my C-sharp Unity tutorials, we're used to seeing it as an exclamation mark. In Python, it's, well, literally the word not. <laughs> We'll go ahead, we'll save that off, run it. And if we take a look at the lights here, not only are we not getting the warnings because of the cleanup that ran during the last finally statement, but when we press the button, the light goes on. When we let go of the button, the light goes off. There we go, we're all ready to start setting up some Morse code, except for the sleep. We'd have to go ahead and adjust our sleep timer because right now the fastest we could get something to blink is a 10th of a second. Uh, but there we go. We've learned how to take some input from a button and some output, which we're just going to alight. And we've also learned how to group our grounds using the columns over here. So we don't have to use so many pins. Now for a little bit of a challenge, go ahead and set up three different lights, three different buttons. And when you go ahead and press a certain button, it'll go ahead and light up the corresponding light. But as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.